Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at a relatively obscure canister filter. But you guys watching in Australia might recognise this because I think that is currently the only place that this one is on sale. This is the Aquamanta EFX1000U. And the reason I've got this one is, it was sent to me by a guy called Jason. Thank you very much, Jason. And these were actually sold by a company called Maidenhead Aquatics. And if you're in the UK, I'm sure you've heard of them. They've got about 14 million shops up and down the country. And before they moved on to the next range of Aquamanta filters, this is what they sold. I think this was the first model of their Aquamanta filters, if I remember rightly. So this is currently not available in the UK, but you can still buy the spare parts for it. And hopefully this video will be useful to anybody who does still currently run one of these. And obviously it should be useful to you guys in Australia as well. Not sure you guys in the US are going to get any use out of this, but you might have something that is very similar, just marketed under a different name. So if you're interested, please watch on. I'll bring the camera in. We'll take the top off. I'll show you which way the water flows and then we'll see if we can do anything to make it more efficient. But before I do that, I might as well give you a few facts and figures because I normally forget to do that until the end. This pumps approximately 1,000 litres per hour, which is 263 gallons per hour, and it's recommended for a tank of 300 litres, or up to 300 litres, which is approximately 79 US gallons. Okay, we've got two buttons on the top of here. One is to prime it, it's got an electronic primer, and the other one is the UV button, because this does have a UV in it, which is a bit of a rarity, because I don't think I've shown many filters that do actually contain a UV. We've got the normal in and out pipes, we've got the release mechanism to take that off. We've got a very funny shaped filter, which you'll be able to see more of when we get into the trays. And we've got some decent quality clasps to keep the top on. Okay, that was a that was a bit of a tight fit. The water comes in from your tank, it goes over the UV bulb, which actually looks like it's burnt out, so you need a new UV bulb in there, Jason. And then it goes down this pipe here. And that's the normal sort of setup. It's basically a pipe created by the trays. It goes all the way to the bottom, then it rises back up through the trays, gets drawn out by the pump, and it gets returned back to the tank. So in here we have one, two, three trays. And each one of those lower trays has got a little rubber seal on the top, just to hold it in here and make sure that we don't get any bypass. And for all they're a crazy shape, they actually fit together very, very well. And then on the top, we've got the normal grid, just to stop any filter media from going into your pump, if the filter happens to tip over. So, very standard setup, crazy shape to the trays, and a little bit of available space in the bottom of there. Not sure you can see, maybe there, we've got little fins all the way around the side that keeps the bottom tray up off the bottom of the filter so we do have approximately an inch or 25 millimeters to put some sort of primary settlement in there which will probably be ceramic rings as far as the media which has come with this goes there's very little obviously there's nothing in there there's a pad in there which looks like it's been a homemade one because it's got a big hole uh, and I've got another pad under there. And when this was new it would have come with some ceramic rings, it would have come with a coarse, medium and fine pad and it also would have had a phosphate pad as well. Yeah, these don't even fit. I think Jason might have just chucked these in just for just to say that there was actually something in the filter but they, they don't fit, you know. I mean the water's just going to fly through there, it's going to be bypass. So it's nothing that we can't sort out. So we've got three empty trays, and if you remember, the water flows from bottom to top through the trays. So in the bottom of here, we're just going to put some cheap ceramic rings. If I've got any spare, I think I might have a few. 
Then in the bottom tray, we're going to put forms from coarse, medium to fine. And that leaves us two trays for filter media, which will be Biohome Ultimate. So I'll get the forms cut, I'll get the media put in, I'll bring you back and we'll see how much we can fit in here. Although we've got crazy shaped trays, I found it easier just to drop this on top of the foam and just cut round it in more or less a circle. The foams don't need to be cut to these wavy shapes at all because they fit in quite well. So in the bottom tray we've now got from bottom to top coarse, medium and then a fine pad. I'm sure you've seen these before. These are just sold for pond filters. No need to spend fortunes on ones that are marketed for aquariums. Pond filter ones are cheap and they do the job. And if we have them bumpy side down, that means when the water hits them, it's hitting the biggest surface area. The surface area on there compared to there. There's really no comparison. And because we've got a bumpy bit on top of the flat bit of that foam, We've got cavities in here and that traps even more muck. Basically stops your foam from getting clogged so quickly. So now our water hits coarse and then medium and then the fine pad. So once it leaves this tray and heads up through the media trays, the water will be clean and that will keep our media clean and it will keep it working efficiently. And because my memory is worse than useless, I've forgotten to show you the first stage of this filtration, which is the settlement in the bottom of here. That's basically just an inch, or roughly an inch, of ceramic rings in the bottom of there. So when the water comes down, the heavy particles should settle out in all of the ceramic rings. Ceramic rings are great for that. They're not too good at holding bacteria, but they're great for trapping muck. So water comes down, hits the rings, heavy muck should get trapped in there, hopefully. And then it'll be up to the foams, through those, and into the media. So we can drop this foam tray in here now. And that's basically all of our mechanical part done. The muck will be held in the bottom third of the filter. And then we've got two trays. Each one is roughly a kilo or 2.2 pounds of Biohome Ultimate, which is an extremely porous, very accessible, sintered glass media. That will ensure that this will support not only aerobic bacteria for the reduction of ammonia and nitrite, but also anaerobic bacteria for the reduction of nitrate as well. And that reduction of nitrate is what we're really after, because that is a full cycle. If you're getting zero ammonia and zero nitrite, but you've still got high nitrates, you're only doing half a job, no matter what you read on the internet. Most people will say a full cycle is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and high nitrate, but that's just the aerobic part. With suitable media, and plenty of it, you can get a full cycle. So when people tell you that you can't achieve a full cycle in a canister filter, that's nonsense because it's all down to the choice of media and how much media you use. If you've got a media that will support anaerobic activity, then it just needs a certain amount for the size of the tank and the stock, and then you've got a full cycle. It's that simple. Um, it feels like a bit of an uphill struggle trying to explain that to people at times because there's so much disinformation out there, but we're getting there. We are getting there. <laughs> So, media trays go in. And then the grid goes on top. And then the top of the filter can go back on. And that's the filter done damn sight heavier now than it was when it arrived. That's a nice fit. One, two, three.
three and four. That's quite a well-made filter. I'm not sure why they stopped selling these in the UK. They maybe had a, a certain licensing agreement or something, but yeah, I can't really see anything wrong with that filter. But I haven't run this particular one. You guys out there, if you've owned one of these or you currently own one, please put a report of how you're getting on with it in the comment section. That's what that's there for underneath this video. We've managed to fit two kilos of media in here quite comfortably. You could probably get a little bit more in. And two kilos is 4.4 pounds for you guys in the US. So that makes this filter suitable for a tank of up to 200 litres or 52 US gallons if you wanted to achieve that full cycle using the biohome setting it up this way. But if you had a heavily stocked tank you could halve those figures down to about 100 litres or 26 US gallons for a full cycle. Obviously it'll keep the water clear and it'll keep the ammonia and nitrite at zero for a tank much bigger than what I've just laid out there. But we're after a full cycle so you might think they're a little bit pessimistic those figures but they are realistic for a full cycle, a proper nitrogen cycle. Now this isn't far off the size of another filter that you guys in Australia will be very familiar with which is the Aqua One Aquas 1250. But that 1250 from Aqua One actually holds four kilos of media, which is twice what this one holds. And I think it's all these wavy shapes. It looks nice, but it, it just eats into that volume all the time. So it's quite big, but it doesn't hold a vast amount of media. Two kilos isn't bad, but it could hold more if it was just simply square. That would make such a difference make it easier to cut the foams as well. But having said that, this does appear to be a pretty decent filter. As I mentioned before, I don't know why they're not available in the UK now, but they are still available in Australia. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up, share it wherever you want, and I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching.